On the first, I stand amazed in the presence of Jesus the Nazarene and wonder how he could love me, a sinner condemned unclean. How marvelous, how wonderful, and my song shall ever be. How marvelous, how wonderful is my Savior's love for me. For me it was in the garden, he prayed not my will but thine. He had no tears for his own grief, but sweat drops of blood for mine. How marvelous, how wonderful, and my song shall ever be. How wonderful is my Savior's love for me. On the third and the last, He took my sins and my sorrows, He made them His very own. He bore the burden to Calvary and suffered and died alone. How marvelous! Father, thank you for bringing us together this evening. Thank you for the graduation and the celebration of uh, Dennis and finishing school. I pray that you would bless him as he continues. Bless his service. I pray that everything goes smoothly and we would hear what you have for us this evening. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated. Oh, that's right. We're going to pledge first. I'm sorry. Please remain standing. We're going to pledge first the American flag, then the Christian flag, and then we're going to pledge our allegiance to the Holy Bible. Ready? Begin. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for all which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Ready? Begin. I pledge allegiance to the Christian flag and to the Savior for whose kingdom it stands, one Savior, crucified, risen, and coming again with life and liberty for all who believe. Ready? Begin. I pledge allegiance to the Bible, God's holy word. I'll make it a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. I will hide its word in my heart that I might not sin against God. Now you may be seated. 243 in your songbooks, please. 243, Victory in Jesus. We'll sing all three verses. On the first. I heard it all.
Jesus, my Savior forever. He sought me and bought me with His redeeming blood. He loved me ere I knew Him, and all my love is due Him. He plunged me into victory beneath the cleansing flood. but none exactly like this one. So again, thank you for being here. Our out-of-town guests may still be on the, the road with the traffic being a little slower than usual. We're calling this tonight a celebration of life. Brother Baxter will be coming shortly with the main message. I thought I'd just make a few introductory thoughts. Tonight we rejoice in a threefold celebration. Our God is a threefold person. Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. People without faith cannot accept that. But tonight we're thankful for the culmination of God's three ordained institutions working together to get us to this milestone of success. It is the work of our government as well as the government of Russia. It's a work of the family, the church, the church of our Lord Jesus Christ that we celebrate tonight. Zeroing in on one particular life, Dennis, our graduating senior of 2012. And I say our because it's a culmination of government, family, and church working together. His life is representative of each of us. He was separated from his birth parents living in a government-supported shelter, an orphanage, back in 1998 when we first met. And each of us, as sinners, was or is still living a life separated from our Creator, God, because of sin. The Russian government and the U.S. government, one-time enemies, agreed for a legal transfer for Dennis' citizenship to be transferred legally to another country and to another family. Amen. In 1998, when Dennis was seven years old, living in St. Petersburg, Russia. And tonight, as I said, we are grateful for God and these two govern governments for the cooperation that allowed this transfer of citizenship to take place. We are most thankful to God for the process of adoption spiritually 
allowing any of all repentant sinners to enter his family of the redeemed by faith. And even though this is a formal service, uh, more formal than our regular informal Bible study and prayer meeting, we'd appreciate your enthusiastic responses with amens and praise the Lord as you feel led. As we're again, we're celebrating. This is not a funeral. It's not uh, the end of life, but the very beginning of a new chapter in the life of each of us, not just our graduating seniors and not just our academy students that are going to be awarded here shortly, but it's a new beginning for all of us in one way or another. I'm next most grateful to the human hero of this success story, sitting here by the piano, my dear wife, and the mother of Dennis, Mrs. Marilyn J. Michael, for the step of faith she took to board an airplane with me to embrace the unknown adventure of responsibility for life number seven in the Michael household at 46 Sturgis Street, Medford. It is primarily, I think, because of the hard work that a mother has to put into rearing children and dedication and love of his adoptive mother that we have made it to this moment tonight. We are here also forever grateful to his five other mothers, that is, his older sisters. <laughs> Especially Sonia, who would have loved to be here tonight, but being heavy with child, the doctors would not approve of her flight here. But it was Sonia who first taught him to speak, to read, and write the English language right here in the New England Christian Academy in the ABC Learning to Read class when we received him at age seven. We're also tonight grateful for his brother Scott, who has received him, helped nurture him, mold him, and made the long trip across the country to be here tonight to celebrate this moment of history for this man named Dennis Michael. His grandparents, as well as his aunts and uncles, have been excellent role models for him as well. We thank each one that had a part. And thirdly, the next level of appreciation would go in recognition to his, to his extended church family. Yes, government, family has worked together, but so has this church, the New England Baptist Church, and we're thankful tonight. Thank you to his Sunday school teachers to the junior church workers. And we're not gonna thank the nursery workers. He did miss that phase of Sunday school. <laughs> we're thankful for those of you taking him out, bus calling and soul winning for our deacons and each one of you that showed love and received this young man into our church family. And thankful to the New England Christian Academy staff, which includes his first learning center teachers, the Baxters, and even Mrs. Baxter, who would have loved to be here, but her first priority was to her own daughter, Emily, in the bringing forth and their third child, a son. And she is there tonight helping in that responsibility. Thank you, Brother Cody, for taking up the mantle that Brother Baxter and Miss Sonia handed you. Thank you to Miss Alita and Mrs. Baxter tonight, Mrs. Debbie Baxter, and Mrs. D'Ambrosio that's here tonight. Mrs. Thomas, and many others who volunteer to make our academy what it is Amen. and keeping the doors open. Tonight we give glory to God for the privilege we have to work in sparing our most valued possessions, our children, from a polluted, a corrupt, an ungodly, government-controlled, socialistic, anti-Christ school system that is undermining the Bible, our Constitution, Amen. and the basic godly morality that made this nation the envy of the world, and the blessed, and the blessed by God has put upon this nation over the last more than 200 years, we pause tonight to thank the combined effort of two countries a family, and a church working together. And in conclusion, yes, we celebrate tonight, but we also want to celebrate the life of Dennis Jefferson Michael, who has exercised his free will to submit to his old-fashioned, godly, separated parents from the world Amen. under our God, under our government, in our church to make right decisions to get him to this point tonight. 
You've worked hard, Dennis. We don't give these diplomas away. They have to be earned. You've played fair, and we congratulate you tonight. However, this is not the end for you. This is a new beginning of new opportunities await each new day to take you and each one of us to take what we've learned to glorify God with your life, to continue to reach out to the lost as a soul winner for Jesus and work with us as Christians for a spiritual revival in this great nation that could turn back to the biblical truth that will help the multitude to see that are still in the valley of despair and darkness, not knowing our Lord Jesus Christ as most of us do here tonight. Not knowing our Lord would like to adopt them into his family. That really makes salvation available for the soul and the body. And so our congregation tonight, family and friends, joins in congratulating. And may our joint prayer go before you that God will continue to provide your very best for your future. With that in mind, I present to you now the main speaker of tonight, a man that has earned our respect in this place, who's labored in this ministry for more than 25 years before feeling led to depart to Michigan, where he continues to serve our Lord. And those of us who were back in the beginning days of this church remember how Robert and Sharon Baxter gave their life to God to their country, but most of all, to the, not most of all, but in honor of Christ, to the establishing of this church and the many young boys and young girls that turned into man, men and women over the years. Tonight is a special night for him as well. And as he comes to the pulpit to bring the message, we as church and family and friends are presenting to him a gift to recognize his 60th birthday and to thank him for making the effort to be here tonight to celebrate what he had a part way back in the early years of the New England Baptist Church and Christian Academy. With that in mind, let's welcome our main speaker of the night, Pastor Robert Baxter, Jr. God bless you. Yours is over here. Praise the Lord. Amen. Time to have some fun. But of course, all the fun will be directed at Dennis. He is the focus. If Brother Simpson were here, he'd be saying something like, wow. That's right. As Brother Cody was saying the pledges, uh, I ended that with, good morning, students, which was regular fare for many, many years. Welcome, parents, friends, church members, and of course, the graduate, today's graduate. Um, this ends the 36th consecutive year of New England uh, Christian Academy. Amen? 36 years. That's not bad. And it ends 36 years of commitment from New England's Baptist Church to Christian education. Thank you for being faithful at a time when economic hardships and uh, hardships on the church and organizations and parents who struggle uh, to make ends meet. I ad admire and thank God for your faithfulness, especially in a time <clears throat> when seemingly the world is influencing the church rather than the church influencing the world. Common sense in the Bible, <clears throat> picture the, the natural God-made universe and everything in it as having a beginning and an end. There is a material birth and death which one, way, one day will extend to the entire universe. Uh, praise the Lord. It's not decided by some crank, self-made prophet, but it's already been determined by God at the proper time, yeah. at the appointed time. Today we celebrate the graduation of Dennis J. for Jefferson Michael, a culmination of many concerted efforts that have gone on 24-7, for some 12 plus years is what I got. Congratulations, first of all, mom and dad, for your vision, love, character to keep going on, realizing all the goings on. 
that make this day possible. Congratulations to every teacher, helper, and mentor that has contributed to the academics, which has brought to reality a document that we'll see tonight. It says that the goal has been officially reached, attained, and deserved. Unlike some places, they just give a piece of paper. I was at the doctor's office the other day with my mom, and we just got talking, and uh, he was joking about uh, several years ago a, a Brandeis University student that was not being able to pay their bill, wasn't going through because he had more checks in his book than money. When he was asked, uh, you know, what was going on, he said, well, I still had some more checks left, so I thought I still had some more money in the bank. Huh? That's not what this piece of paper is going to say. It's going to say he knows what he's doing. Congratulations uh, to all the friends and church support standing by Dennis aside all these years in prayer and partnership and uh, sometimes even persuasion. Huh? I remember when I first came uh, back from the service to Hanscom Field, um, the service had given me kind of a, a bad deal, and I was kind of upset, so I was glad to be at Hanscom and at home. I was a medic at the dispensary at uh, Hanscom Field. And while I was there, I got accepted into the academy. But by that time, I already had a girlfriend. I already had a 65 Mustang, fastback, 289, Fenton Speed on the floor. I didn't want to go anywhere. But the doctors I work with took me out back and counseled me, persuaded me. They ought not give this up. This was worth it. And sometimes we probably had to do that with Dennis, I'm sure. And of course, congratulations, Dennis, for every X answer, circled page, initialed pace, and all the different courses and subjects taken to achieve today's goal. Today, Dennis, you're officially outgrown the four walls below us and the space that it represents. Today, we launch you, Dennis, into a bigger space, somewhat of the unknown, unexplained, maybe even perilous space as you continue to grow into manhood and more particularly to grow into Christian manhood, become more like Christ. Hey. Uh, it's kind of like, you know, the old Star Trek. I had to have, I was always going to have to give me some, some sound effects. I know he'd be good at that. But, uh, you know, the beginning of that, you say this, space, the final frontier. Huh? And that's where Dennis is headed, into space, a different space. <laughs> there are always different thoughts or opinions on any one subject. Some view a cup, a cup half empty. Some say it's half full. Much of the time, uh, much of the time, time and space are relative. Several miles can be a long, arduous trek for some, but if you're flying, it only takes the blink of an eye. Very relative. The universe is such a subject. First of all, some see it as a space that never ends, so vast as it could never be fully explained or understood in one's lifetime or several lifetimes. Sadly, this kind of thinking only ends in defeat, discouragement, and disenchantment. But for you, Dennis, I suggest you see it as plenty of room. Huh? Places to go, people to meet, um, professions to acquire. Sure, it's a big world and a gigantic space, but all the more area to conquer for Christ. Dennis says, uh, many tend to wind down. My advice is to stay wound up, ever eager to do God's will no matter where in space, either nearby or in distant lands, that's your goal. There are still great areas to serve Christ. Huh? Dennis, don't allow others to limit your life. And also, don't limit it yourself in what lies ahead. Secondly, some picture space as a cold and uninviting place. Why venture out into the unknown under such uncomfortable, unrelenting conditions? Some will allow the cold to limit or even end their usefulness. I remember a fellow here at the church 
We got him a job after a long time to work in a uh, refrigeration system. He quit because it was too cold. <laughs> Maybe he should have put on a coat. Sometimes the coat you get, Dennis, doesn't fit right away. You have to grow into it. Uh, those days are ahead for you. Dennis, what a wonderful example you have in a preacher dad who used a simple tea bag as a reminder of the space in New England, and Boston in particular, he was to go, to touch down, to inhabit and preach the saving gospel message of God's unending grace by his life, death, burial, and the resurrection of his son. Dennis, don't be afraid of the cold, but change it by the warmth of your life in Christ to make a difference to the cold, empty lives around you. That's what you need to do. Amen. Last, some paint space uh, as empty and dark, vacant, void of life. Some will uh, allow uh, this look and life uh, to give them what they want as a life of ease. It's too hard out there. I, I couldn't go out there. Huh? Some only use that as an excuse to do only as much as necessary. Nothing's ever been done great for the world by doing as much as necessary. It's always been the second mile. Why venture into that vacant and, uh, uh, and leave life's niceties behind? Why take even a step when I don't know what I'm stepping into? It's dark. I can't see anything. It's risky. Dennis, this is your greatest opportunity, your new journey into space. I can still remember a little bit of my venture coming on the staff here at New England Christian Academy. I, I wanted to come on very quickly, and a preacher was wise to let me grow as a Christian first. In fact, preachers one that led me to the Lord, if you don't know. And um, I remember I came on, uh, Pastor Dave Overly had started and was running the church. I came on at the bottom of the totem pole sometime in October, I believe it was, when they put me on staff. Uh, that same year, uh, Brother Overly uh, took on a pastorate in Minnesota, I believe it was, and that left staff members, including me. One day, Preacher Michael came by me, looked into my eyes and said, Bob, we need someone to close the school this year. Can you do it? I guess I can. Hey. Then as we closed the school, I came to the end of the school year and asked Preacher Michael, what do I do now for the summer? His reply, I don't know. What are you going to do? <laughs> so I learned how to be useful with my hands a little bit more. Then at the end of that summer, Preacher Michael came by again and said, we need someone to open the school. Why don't you go ahead and do it? Okay, I'll do it. And there I was 25, 24 years later doing the same old stuff. But I didn't let the unknown and the darkness stop me, not in the least. Dennis, this is your greatest opportunity. Don't let it fall. Dennis, realize that darkness needs light. Empty spaces need filling. As you lift off from here, pray for direction to be the light of the world. Make yourself opportunities to find an empty life which can be filled with the love of Christ. Huh? I've learned this over the years that being a preacher is the best job in the whole world. Amen. It is. And there's one huge reason for it. It is because of people. Let me tell you also, being a preacher is the worst job in the whole world. You know what the reason is? Yeah. Same thing. <laughs> it is people. But what a great opportunity we have to influence people. Amen. We'll never get our name on the headlines, on the news. We're not going to be the attention of a worldwide whatever it is. 
And we can influence someone to do that. Reminded of good old Dale Moody has his name on a stone uh, on a corner street down in, uh, in uh, Boston. Everybody remembers his name, but can somebody tell me the shoemaker who led him to the Lord, his name? Is he not going to get as much blessing as Dale Moody? Absolutely. You have ended your career at New England Christian Academy. What's next? Because you are not finished yet, and God is not finished with you yet either. Huh? Ephesians chapter 2. Here's what God wrote down. Ephesians chapter 2, starting in verse 1. And you hath he quickened, who were dead in trespasses and sin. Amen? Hey. Huh? That's the beginning of the gospel right there. We're just dead in sin. Wherein in time past you walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience, among whom also we all had our conversation in time past in the lust of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and the mind, and were by nature the children of wrath, even as others. No one is any better than somebody else. That's right. huh? No one is. But God, who is rich in mercy, for his great love wherewith he loved us, even when we were dead in sins, hath quickened us together with Christ. By grace ye are saved. And hath raised us up together, and made us to sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus, that in the ages to come he might show the exceeding riches of his grace and his kindness toward us through Christ Jesus. For by grace are you saved through faith, that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. Do you realize that anything good that happens on this earth it's because of God. Yes. Yes. Anything good that happens on this earth, for the most part, is because of Christians. They have the Holy Spirit of God living in them. I just can't imagine the greatness of the picture when the rapture occurs. And at that moment, we're out of here. And who's going with us? The Holy Spirit. The presence of God is going out of the earth. His power is still going to be around, but we're gone. How horrible will it get? Wherefore, remember that ye being in time past Gentiles in the flesh, who are called uncircumcision by that which is called the circumcision in the flesh made by hands, that at that time you were without Christ. And here's where Star Trek and space comes in. Being aliens. Uh, they say there's aliens in the, the space. <laughs> I don't know. I don't care. I'm worried about here. Yes, amen. But it says that at that time you were without Christ being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers from the covenants of promise, having no hope and without God in the world. But now in Christ Jesus, ye who sometimes were far off are made nigh by the blood of Christ. Boy, God bless you, Dennis, for the Christian you are today. But God's not finished with you. As you launch out into this vast, cold, dark space, God bless you, Dennis, for the Christian that are all looking forward for you to become. It's a great day. And thank you, Dennis. Hey.
Some choices are not made without a struggle. Some battles must be fought from day to day. The victory must be won by faith in Jesus. He alone can give the truth. He alone can show the way. to those who have helped me reach this special day. First of all, I'd like to thank my parents for their support and prayers in raising me and helping me to get through school. I remember sitting at the kitchen table trying to do my English homework and not being able to understand it. My mom, the wonderful English teacher that she is, would take me back to the beginning, have me read the instructions, 
and make me do it all over again the right way. I'm thankful for my dad who has taught me to stay focused on the things of God, as well as many valuable life lessons. One of the many things that I have learned from my dad is to be consistent and faithful in the things of God without wavering. When we would work on something together and we couldn't get it, I would tell him, there is no way, it just will not work. And he would say, don't give up, just keep trying. And I would try and try and still not get it, and then he would come over and fix it just like that. And I would sit there and think, why didn't I think of that? I'd like to thank my sister Sonia for teaching me how to read, to write, and to speak English. She was also the one who was influential in leading me to Christ. I would like to thank Brother Cody for the many hours that he has invested in my education and for always looking out for my well-being. I appreciate all the good lessons that he has taught us from Proverbs each morning as they help me throughout the day. Thank you to Miss Alita and Miss Debbie for helping me with my studies in the Learning Center. I'd also like to thank Mrs. D'Ambrosio for the great art and cooking classes and putting up with all the messes that we made. <laughs> I most of all want to thank God for giving me the privilege and allowing me to come to this country and enjoy the freedoms that we have. As I start this new chapter of my life and seek God's will, I hope to please him in all that I do. Amen. Thank you all for praying for me and helping me to succeed. Well, amen. That was all great stuff. Brother Baxter, the singing. Brother Dennis, you are a man. Amen. amen. That was great. Okay. In recognition of the completion of the required courses of study for graduation, we hereby present the following diploma to Mr. Dennis Michael. You did it, bro. In recognition of the completion of the Reading Readiness Program, the following certificates are presented to, um, and they're going to come right up, right? Come right up when you hear your name. Ariana D'Ambrosio, Soraya Gilligan, Caitlin Schrock, and Faylin Rincon. Yes! Come on. Awesome students, got to tell you. Scripture memory medals are going to be presented to the following. Come on up when you hear your name. Brandon Brewer, Michaela Brewer, Stephen Lee, Jenny Lee, Kaylee McGrath, Michael McGrath, Dennis Michael, David Roche, Joanna Thomas, Cynthia Umana, and Prince Wearwear. Because this year we have students who started in the second semester of school here at New England Christian Academy, we uh, do indeed give these 
two quarters of honor roll certificates to the following. Come right up, Kaylee McGrath, Michael McGrath, Cynthia Umana. Two quarters of honor roll, both quarters. Will the following please come up and receive three quarters honor roll certificates? Brandon Brewer, Michaela Brewer. Now we have students who received um, honor roll certificates for all four quarters this year. Please come on up. Jenny Lee, Stephen Lee, and Joanna Thomas. Now it's time for some awards for the most paces at the elementary school level. Why don't you come on up, Jenny Lee with 109. <laughs> for the most paces, junior, senior high, Joanna Thomas with 81. Hey. For the highest average at the elementary school le uh, level, it's Jenny Lee with 96.7. Come on up. <laughs> For the highest average in the junior senior high level, David Rosh, 90.2. Neatest Pace Award goes to Joanna Thomas. Good work. And we watched this man grow up to almost be a state trooper. Athlete Award of the Year, Brandon Brewer. Come on up. <laughs> Awarded for a helpful, willing spirit is the Servant's Heart Award, which goes to Miss Michaela Brewer. And now to the person who had the scripture the more times first than anyone else, fastest scripture award goes to Stephen Lee.
Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And now for our Hide It in Your Heart Award. Oh, it was so close. We did have a 99, but we had 100. 100 goes to Jenny Lee. Come on. This one last award to Brother Brian D. Cody, recognizing seven years of service award in appreciation for seven years of dedicated service. You make a difference, New England Christian Academy, June the 13th, 2012. Thank you, Brother Cody. Thank you so much. You're all a gift. This is a gift, and the school is a gift. That's all I can say. Praise the Lord. It's the best thing that's ever happened to me. And so I really, really, I'm blown away. I'm surprised. This is great, great plaque. I'm, where am I going to put this? <laughs> but um, thank you. Thank you, school and, and, and church. And God bless you all. God bless us all. Amen? Yes. Well, thank you. You may be seated. One of the motivations to keep the school open in its low days was the adoption of Dennis and realizing we could not in clear conscience send him to a public school was to keep the doors open. That motivation tonight has ended, folks, so the responsibility rests on other people's shoulders, those a lot younger than we are. There are children waiting all over the world for adoption. Foster care is being satisfied by basically the world. And we as God's people need to pray and ask God for wisdom, how to reach the younger generation, how to train them for Christ, and get them to the point of adulthood with a foundation under them that will last forever in the kingdom of heaven. It costs money, as you know, to do many things today. Salvation's free, but that's about all we have to offer free. So tonight as the offering plates are passed, we're delighted to know that you have supported this place in the past. We've not gone in debt and our conscience will not allow us to. So I trust you'll give cheerfully tonight a gift to give us the faith to keep going, that you'll have lots of children, those of you that are married and have godly spouses, that you'll either train them at home or send them to us or a school of like faith, that you won't take a chance of letting them go the way of the world, and that schools like ours would prosper again and grow, and Amen. other churches would open schools and support homeschoolers. Congratulations to the homeschoolers here tonight right. and the good work they're doing. They need our encouragement as well as churches to do what we're doing. Sunday school is a good beginning, but we need Monday through Friday schools as well. As we receive to the offering tonight, Mrs. Michael and Samantha Thomas will be playing for us to God be the glory. We want him to have all the glory. We're glad to have another pastor here tonight as well, Pastor Robbie Day, who's grown up in this place and gone off to serve the Lord. I'm going to ask him to lead us in prayer for the offering and for God's blessing on the old-fashioned Boston Tent Common Meeting tonight that goes on under the tent as well as tomorrow night and Friday. I would encourage you to try to get in there Thursday night or Friday night. And after we dismiss here, we do have some light refreshments downstairs, but some of you night owls might even want to drive in there tonight as a way of encouraging the preachers and the work that's going on there. They may have a record attendance tonight because of the rain. The homeless will go under for shelter and for warmth and love and friendship. And may we join our hearts in prayer as Brother Day leads us. And as we close the service here in just a few moments, Brother Dave.
Amen. In closing, again, remember this is our prayer meeting night. If you'd like to find a partner to pray with, if there's something on your mind tonight, a burden or a request, don't hesitate to find somebody to pray with before you leave this auditorium or after you have some refreshments downstairs. Don't go home with a burden. Go home rejoicing that God's still on the throne and to him gets, give, we give the glory tonight for your being here, for your presence. One of the 12 men, Tyler, has sprained his ankle. I don't know if he's up there still resting. Recovering. Anybody know where is Tyler? He's still up the resting. Let's remember him in prayer. And I'm going to ask all the graduates of the New England Christian Academy to stand where you are. If you would stand, just remain standing. I'm going to ask Scott Michael, one of the graduates, to come lead us in our closing prayer. He's made the trip from Pasco, Washington. We'd hate to have you not recognize his attendance here uh, for this occasion. He's working for World Relief, helping uh, receive and establish immigrants from all over the world. You want to say a word about that and then close us in prayer. Thank you for the effort you've put forth to get us to this place as well. It's great to see you again. And I just I want to echo the thanks that have already been said to Pastor Baxter for the investment in my life and so many other people's lives. And to Mr. Cody, thank you for what you've done to help Dennis. Really grateful for that. We are uh, living in Washington State, helping refugees. Um, Many of them um, from Iraq that helped the U.S. government and had to flee because of persecution. Somalis that live in refugee camps in Kenya with basically a tarp um, over some sticks. And um, Burmese who have had to flee out of Burma, Myanmar, living in refugee camps. That if, um, they drop a bag of rice onto the ground. Um, we would just go get another bag of rice, but they stoop down into the dust and pick up each kernel of rice to collect it again. That's the kind of life that they live. So we have a chance to help them start a new life. And I know your church is, my church here, this church, <laughs> is helping many refugees and, and other immigrants who have many needs. So I know you're doing many of the same type things. But tonight, I'm just grateful to be here and to see Dennis's amazing accomplishment. 
it's very, very hard to imagine this day would come when, um, as a seven or eight-year-old, um, when we were trying to play ball together and do other things. <laughs> so he actually made it, and great job, Dennis. We're very, very proud of you. So let's pray. Thank you, God, for this day. Thank you for each person here, for mom and dad and the work that they've done and the investment in Dennis, for, for Mr. Cody and Pastor Baxter and the teachers, dedicated teachers, and thank you for Dennis. We ask that you would bless his life. May, as Pastor Baxter said, this be the beginning of a life of serving you, helping others, showing other people the simple message that you love them and came and died on the cross for them. And we pray for your blessing on him, and we thank you for the opportunity for the food and fellowship afterwards. In your name, amen. 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 amen.